Hello and welcome. My name is Bob Belf. I am a senior technical staff member on the North America Smarter Commerce Architect team. And today I'm going to give you an introduction to the WebSure Commerce Data Load Utility. So what is the Data Load Utility? The Data Load Utility is a new enhanced business object based loading utility. This utility provides an efficient solution for loading information into your WebSure Commerce database. You can also utilize the data load utility to load other types of data, which we'll get into later. And lastly, the data load utility is the recommended utility for loading data and files and objects into your WebSure Commerce system. So how does it work? Well, usually start with data somewhere, whether it's another system, an ERP system, a back-end system, etc. And that data usually has to go through some type of massaging to get into a system like WebSure Commerce. The data load utility provides a flexible way that you can structure that data to be imported into the system. Usually this would involve a developer to write the XML files for the configuration and to identify the file format coming in from the other systems and then some type of marketing person or a database person to actually import the files into the WebSure Commerce database. I'm not going to go over this entire step process because it's available on the WebSure Commerce Info Center. But at the end of this presentation, I think you're going to get a, have a good familiarity with how the data load process works, and even non-developer types should be able to go ahead and execute this process on their own. So, what types of files are supported? Well, it supports common delimited files, or CSV files, and it also supports XML files. I'm a big fan of CSV files because these files can be massaged with a tool like a spreadsheet, like Excel or your favorite spreadsheet application. This also means you can do things like you know, text search and replace, etc. on the files before they're imported into the system. So out of the box, WebSure Commerce comes with a bunch of pre-configured mediators and configuration files, meaning if you're ERP system or your back-end system can actually export a comma delimited file in the out-of-the-box format, you really have no development or configuration needed and the files and tools available within the WebSure Commerce Toolkit should just work as is. So some of the things that come out of the box are catalog, inventory, price, membership, and Commerce Composer. Data load also works with workspaces, meaning that you can load a set of data into the system within the context of a task in a workspace. This allows you to go ahead and submit the data load for further review, either on a staging site or a development site. So what this allows you to do is to not import the data you know, directly into the production database, but go through the approval process to make sure that the data is in fact correct. And this comes in handy when you're talking about multiple sites with translations, etc. And you can see here, this is a snippet from one of the configuration files where you identify uh, the workspace identifier, the task group identifier, and then the task ID that you would like to import this under. The data load utility also pr provides the capability for using variables as parameters. As you can imagine, this would allow you to do a single set of changes in, in one file, maybe the batch file, where you define these parameters, and then they can be used throughout the configuration file process. This allows the greatest flexibility and reuse of your data load files without having to make changes all throughout the different XML files. And then lastly, the data load utility comes with a log file. This log file is your key to debugging problems. It shows you how, many data, uh, how much data has been processed, how many business objects have been affected, how many tables in the database have been affected, and it also tells you the number of inserts, updates, and deletes 
that were executed based on the data you provided to the utility. So more on that log file later. Now we're going to go ahead and do a deep dive. So if you had enough and you don't want to know the internals, you might want to go ahead and stop watching now. But now I'm going to show you a little lower level for those that are interested in understanding how the data load utility actually works under the covers. So this screen here is to show you the different files that are at play. We have the wcdataload.batch file, which is the entry point to the utility, and it points to the, where the Webster Commerce Toolkit is, the log file that you want to export, and the base wcdataload.xml file that begins the configuration of how to load the data. The wcdataload.xml file then loads an environment file because you may have different environments, you may want to specify multiple files, and then that file points to the individual uh, uh, configuration files for the different types of elements that you're going to load. And then lastly, the green boxes represent the actual files that you've constructed that are coming from another system. Things like groups, entries, inventory, prices, etc. And one thing to note, all of the blue boxes come out of the box. And like I stated earlier, if you really don't change or modify the data load utility process, then you can just use the files as is and you don't really even have to go into any of them. But we're going to go ahead and go into them so you understand them. And the first one is the wcdataload.bat. You can see here we set up the data home directory, the WC home direct, uh, directory, the data load XML, and then the log file. And then lastly, we just simply call the utility from the Webster Commerce Toolkit bin directory. This is also where you would set up different variables if you want to have your process to be variable dri uh, driven. So the WC data load XML file, this is the first XML file that's called, and this is where you would identify what environment file that you're going to use, and then two, the different types of business object files that you're going to have loaded within this process. And the reason I say different is you may only be loading prices or inventory for a particular data load. It's really up to you and what your needs are. In this demonstration, I'm actually going to show you a full load, which includes categories, uh, catalog entries, prices, and inventory. So if I look at the data load env.xml, you'll see here, this is where you define where you're going to load the, the, the data into. And for instance, I am going to be loading this into the Extended Sites Asset Catalog Store, and I'm going to use the default language ID of English and the currency of U.S. dollars. That just means that the base files are going to have English and U.S. dollars, but we still have an opportunity to use the descriptions files to load multiple languages and multiple currencies in a single data load. You also specify what database you're going to be connecting to within this file. So one of the example files would be, for instance, the catalog entry file. And this would contain all of your products and SKUs. And you can see here, the first thing I highlighted was, we're going to use the out-of-the-box data reader, the CSV reader. Now, if this was an XML import, that would be an XML reader. But since I like comma delimited files because I find them easier to work with, we're going to go ahead and continue to use the comma delimited file. And you can see that it's going to be of catalog entry type. And then we start defining the different columns. And this is where you map the column in your spreadsheet to the different database column within the database. So a good example here is the X path for the part number is catalog entry identifier, external identifier, part number. Now, once again, you don't really need to know these X paths unless you're actually doing some customizations. Uh, these configuration files come fully functional out of the box. And really, the only thing that you might want to change is the value, like part number. That might come in as, you know, just part or part num, as an example, in the spreadsheet. Now, if we go ahead and compare this, it should be a direct correlation to 
the file that you have in the spreadsheet. So for instance, part number is the part number column, and sequence is the sequence column, etc. Name, name, short description, language, etc. So this is a very easy way for you to go ahead and figure out what columns you need within the file just by inspecting the configuration XML file. I will state, however, that the Info Center for Web Store Commerce does have sample CSV files that you can simply download and keep the two headers and just replace it with your data, you know, starting in, uh, in row three. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a brief demonstration to show you how all of this works. So what I like to do is I like to set up a directory structure so my different files are, are segmented out and I don't have them all in a single directory. They could be in one big monolithic directory, uh, but I like this so I can organize it a little better. So I put the three base files in the root directory and I just simply point them to the different files within the different directories. So for instance, if I look at the data load XML, you can see here that I'm going to load my catalog group CSV file from the catalog subdirectory and then there is the file and here is the configuration file I will use to go ahead and import that file. So if I go over to the catalog directory, you can see I have a bunch of different files here. I have the configuration files that pretty much come right from the Web Store Commerce Toolkit. I have not modified them. I use the out-of-the-box configuration. And then I go ahead and just apply that configuration to my comma delimited files. So if I go over to my VMware and log in, you can see I've already done one load and really what I want to do is just simply well let's do a directory and you can see I've done one load but I'm going to go ahead and do a load again and I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit here and wait this is actually going to take about three minutes so I'll go ahead and speed up the video now okay it is finished now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the log file. And like I said earlier, the log file shows you how many records have been imported, what tables have been uh, modified, what the total number of inserts and updates were. And you can see since I've already run this, all of them were pretty much updates. But what I'm really going to look for is I'm going to go ahead and jump down to the end uh, and you can see I've, I've loaded a lot here, you know, catalog entries over 1,700, um, over 1,000, uh, you know, 1,700 SEO uh, tags, etc. So if I go all the way down through all the different files that I imported, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for load completed with no errors. And that means it's successful. So now we're ready to go ahead and use this within Management Center. So that's it for the demonstration, and I really appreciate you listening and watching my video, and go ahead and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.